This One Degree Outside video is brought to you by Atatash Mountain Village. Book your stay directly through the link on our homepage, OneDegreeOutside.com. One Degree Outside Insights, the deep dive into meteorology here on a Tuesday morning. Matt Noyce, good to be with you. And you know, we'll start out with the jet stream. There's a lot of weather to get to, so hopefully I'll line it up in a way it makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure what take I'm on. <laughs> I've done this a number of times because I just want to get it all in and make it all make sense. So down to the south is where the jet stream is located. That is our storm steering wind. That's where it stays for a lot of the rest of this week. Now, there's been talk about snow on Saturday. Let's watch the timestamp in the upper left. Let's set the table first. We'll get into the details in just a little bit. But notice setting the table with the jet stream, I can tell you it is still down to our south of New England. What that means is this is, does not favor us getting into the meat of a developing storm. We may be able to get some snow on the north side. It just wouldn't be all that heavy based upon the way the jet stream looks now. And barring any significant change, which I don't really see a lot of reason why there would be a substantial change to it. At the surface right now, we're actually sandwiched between deep low pressure or storm that's out over Atlantic Canada and high pressure coming in from the west. And when you have that kind of barometric pressure difference, it drives the wind. So that's why we're getting the gusts of 40 and 45 miles per hour today. It's why we'll do it again on Wednesday. The map really doesn't change all that much. That certainly is good news for those who are getting some of the upslope snow. When you get into the far north country, there's been enough snow that this is what the trails look like right now from the Pittsburgh Ridge Runners. Thank you, Dana, for sending this in in the Send to Us tab at the bottom of our free Noises One Degree Outside weather app. Not many of the snowmobile trails around New England look like this. So hats off to all the snowmobile clubs because this doesn't just happen this way. you got to groom it. you got to take good care of it. But there's a lot of snowmobile clubs have been doing that work, waiting for the snow, and you need something natural. In an upslope snow situation, you don't get that in the areas that don't have it already, like central New Hampshire, central portions of Maine. Really, it's reserved for some of the west-facing and northwest-facing mountain slopes. But look how well we do just in the next 36 hours from this Tuesday morning recording. All the purple you see in there is about 8-inch snow amounts additional that's coming for you. You don't get that in the valleys. Again, you got to be in the favored spots. Some of the north country, there you go, Pittsburgh Ridge Runners, doing it again. Another 4 inches that's on the way in the next 36 hours. We might do that, too, against the northwest-facing slopes of the presidentials and the whites. But again, once you start coming down to the Mount Washington Valley, you've kind of outrun that. At least snowmaking has been great for skiing, right? Northern Maine picks up a little bit more snow too. But again, a lot of Maine not really favored in these upslope wind events. The wind is certainly something we all feel, right? In terms of gusts going into the day tomorrow, gusts will begin at about 30 to 35 in the morning. During the afternoon, you're going to peak out with your wind gusts somewhere about 40 to 45 miles per hour, still coming out of the west-northwest for the most part here. And then even as they come, quote, down in the evening, you're still to about 35 miles per hour or so. So actual high temperatures tomorrow actually aren't that bad. You're running in the 20s for a lot of southern New England, teens north. But when you figure in that wind, notice the wind chill for your Wednesday, the warmest time of the day, is still sub-zero in parts of northern New England and running likely about 10 degrees or so when you come into southern New England. Wednesday night lows go to about 10 degrees. And with the breeze still going, not as strong, but still going, look at that, sub-zero wind chill all the way down to the Mass Turnpike. Worcester dips below zero in the wind chill for Wednesday night. Then we get into Thursday, and I expect to find the next storm taking shape. It'll be developing and grabbing some Gulf of Mexico moisture. What's interesting is here at home, they're actually, look at this, our signals of snow showers. It's fascinating why we may get a couple of snow showers Thursday. It really is. I'll take you up to about 6,000 feet. Roughly, we'll say the summit of Mount Washington and show you temperature. Why? Because what's driving the snow shower chance on Thursday is this. The storm center that's come by and has made us so windy and cold gets so strong and so deep that it wraps warmth from the south to the east to the north and watch the cold air dissipate over us during the course of Wednesday night to Thursday. Warmth is coming in on a northeast wind. That is rare. But the warmth has wrapped all the way around. We've had storm after storm after storm missing us going out to Atlantic Canada. That now it's brought up enough warmth that's wrapped it around the north and western side of the storm. So believe it or not, the chance of scattered snow showers Thursday, and it wouldn't be a lot, um, but it may add to the upslope snow in some of northern New England beyond even what I showed you. And there could be a snow shower even down to Worcester or Boston. That's coming because of warm air wrapping around the backside of a storm from the north. It is very rare, but it's what happens when you get these storms in the same places again and again and again, and they're strong. 
All right, so what about the weekend system, right? This is atmospheric energy. I'm looking at the mid-levels of the atmosphere. The yellows, the oranges, the reds indicate where the energy is. There are two systems that are going to come into play and try and interact. One of them is south of the Aleutians, all right? That's south of Alaska. The other one is in the southwestern United States. It's all about timing on this because if they can interact in some way, shape, and form, what will happen is this northern disturbance that's coming in will try to grab some of the moisture out of the southern one. The southern one dips all the way, look at this, down to Mexico, grabs moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico as we looked at at the surface map. And then here's the northern one, here's the southern one. How much do they interact? Well, we know from the jet stream where we set the table with at the beginning of the video, most of the storm breeding territory will be south of New England. The issue on whether or not you can get some snow on Saturday would be if you can get this northern stream disturbance to grab just a little bit of that moisture. If they are slightly more separated, it's a miss entirely, and you end up with maybe a snow showers in the mountains, and that would be about it. If they can do exactly what you see here and get just a little bit of interaction, you can extend some of the light snow into southern New England. But look, that's what a real storm looks like. <laughs> okay, that's what it looks like when it gets past us. That's what, if you're a snow lover, you want it to see happening very close to home, and you're just not seeing it. Uh, I've shown you before the AI corrected uh, forecast here, basically artificial intelligence. You can employ it uh, to take historical kind of trends and try to apply it to the forecast. Say, well, based upon multiple times in history. Oh, and I saw the comments last time. Some of you love this and some of you really hated it. Uh, you don't need to distrust AI entirely. This is a tremendous tool uh, for us humans to use because I'm not going to go back and look at every storm that ever passed in this spot before and see what happened. And they're not right all the time. Uh, AI is not the be all and end all of forecasting. All right. But at the same time, look, it does start to bring up some light snow. So historically, what you can say is time and again, in this type of a pattern, you've been able to pull a little bit of light snow north. And that's actually been kind of bearing fruit in the overall probability of snow or precipitation on Saturday be cold enough for snow, which is to say just a couple of days ago, it was down around what, 15 or 20 percent. Right now, look, now it's up around 60 or 65 percent. So that trend has definitely been up. But remember, that's just the chance of any measurable amount of snow coming down, not the chance of a significant or substantial storm. At the surface, what does it look like? Well, we talked about there's the Thursday snow showers that I was telling you about that may even be able to squeeze in to Worcester to Boston. They would not be a big deal, but it may be enough for a coating here and there. Here comes that storm grabbing the moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico again. We've kind of looked at everything now, haven't we? You looked at the jet stream level. You've looked at the mid-level energy. So you know that you favor the storm, the heart of it being down to our south. But again, if you get that little interaction, there's the light snow. When would it arrive? Probably sometime during the course of the morning on Saturday, last you through midday into the mid-afternoon and move on from there. Again, if those two energetic disturbances separate just a little bit more, you don't even end up seeing that in parts of eastern New England. So we'll see how it comes together. Um, it is worth noting that the Cape and the Islands and the South Coast would be the closest to the storm and therefore actually might have the best chance of seeing the most accumulation of anybody if it can get its act together. So that's what we're watching. And now you know everything that goes into it. High temperatures Thursday going to be running about 30. High temperatures Friday leading into that do start to moderate a bit. So as that deep cold eases, it sets the stage so that if you wanted to bring something in here on Saturday, at least you've got mm, somewhat of an open door that you're not so dry it would all evaporate on approach. And that's why I say especially the Cape and the Islands, I think, pays closer attention even than everybody else. But we all have a chance of getting at least enough light snow that yeah, if you treat uh, and it all comes together right, you need to get out there and treat, perhaps. So we'll see what happens with it. The door is not entirely shut. As you can tell, I'm not like gung-ho excited about it because I know that there's just no big top-end potential the way it looks right now. But there's something. in this winter, something is something, right? All right. Meanwhile, don't forget, you can grab our app, Noises One Degree Outside Weather, and follow the forecast and the chance of precipitation as we go day to day. Of course, I will always recommend you tune into these Insight videos because that's where you get it straight from the horse's mouth. All right. That's all for now. Have a great rest of your day.